Welcome back. In this video, we're going to discuss passing data up to a parent component from a stateful form child component. So we've talked about downward data flow, trying to minimize state in child components, keeping these child components as display oriented as possible and passing down info to them. However, we also just talked about how forms involve a lot of state to make a React form work. So if we have a child form, which often we do because for one reason these forms are just massive because of the amount of markup we have to add, but also we often reuse these forms across our application, so it makes sense to make them into a, their own component. So I have a little demo here, a very ugly unstyled shopping list. Right now there's a shopping list component. There are a few hard-coded items. Each one has a name and a quantity. Then I have a method called render items. I'm mapping over, making an li for each item with a name and a quantity. And then the render method just returns a div with an h1, and then it calls render items to get all of those li's instead of a ul. So we end up with this, and this is all coming from state. So if I wanted to add a form so that we could create a new item in the shopping list, I could make that a separate component. Rather than putting it directly inside of here, maybe I want to reuse it. Also, maybe I just want to demonstrate how this works. So I'm going to do just that. I have a component called shopping list form. Right now it's totally empty. Uh, what I'm going to do is start by importing it. Import shopping list form. There we go. And then down below where I'm rendering the items, I'll render a shopping list form. Okay, so at the moment, all we should see is some text that says shopping list form goes here. So we're gonna write the form up, but the, the real pivotal thing is to see how we can have a stateful form send data back up to a method in the shopping list and update this state, the item state, so that we can get a re-render and it will show up on our list. So let's begin with the form itself. It's relatively simple. So we're just gonna return a form and inside of our form, we'll add a label. So there's two inputs, and the first one will be the name of the item. So let's do that input now. So we have ID will be name, and that's gonna work with a form label. Then we have name is name, and that needs to match what we're putting in state. Then we have value, and that can be this.state.name, even though that doesn't exist yet. So that'll be the next thing we do. And then on change can be this, dot handle change, which also doesn't exist, but it's sort of a boilerplate thing we talked about. So now I'm going to add a constructor because I need to initialize some straight state for the form. Super props, and then this dot state equals, and I'm just gonna put both values, values in here. So we have name should start as an empty string, and then the other property is quantity, QT, QTY is what I'm using, and they're both empty at the beginning. Okay, so this state here is only used really to manage the form to make sure React knows what's going on. So we have value set up there and on change. Now I'm gonna duplicate, well actually before I do that, I'm going to do my HTML4 here and make sure it matches name, which is the ID. Then I'm gonna duplicate this entire input. And the next one, instead of name, is going to be for quantity. So I'll change this text to say quantity, update the ID to be quantity, the name is quantity, and then the value is this.state.quantity. Okay, so now we need to make sure we add in handle change. So handle change is the same as we saw uh, of the past couple of videos. So it's just this.setState, and then event.target.name. So we need to make sure those names are correct, name and quantity and set that equal to this dot target or event dot target, excuse me, dot value. So that's just updating this state right here so that name and quantity are in sync. So right now this has nothing to do with the shopping list uh, itself. It's purely a form that has its own sort of management, but nothing else. So let's just see if it's over here and make sure things are being watched correctly. And before I even look at the state, you'll see as I start typing, we get an error, and that's because we didn't bind handle change. That was not on purpose. <laughs> this dot handle change equals this dot handle change dot bind this. Okay, so now if we come back and we open up the React Dev Tools and we go to our shopping form, shopping list form, as we type in here, we should see name and quantity updating, which they are, so that's good. Now we need to do something with that data. So the way that this will work 
is we define our method up here that will actually add a new item to the items in the state. And then we'll pass that method down as we've seen before. The only difference is that we're going to call it with state from this form. So let's first define the method up here that will add a single item. So I'm gonna call it add item. And I'm going to assume it takes the entire item. So rather than saying um, name comma quantity, I'm gonna assume it's passed in as an object, which is how we're gonna pass it in in just a moment. And we can just call this dot set state. But what we're going to do is use the callback form because we're now adding in to the existing state. And the object we want to return is items is now set to all the existing state.items. So remember this state refers to the old state. So whatever I call this, this needs to match. State.items comma item, which is what is coming in. This is that fancy shorthand way of saying, take all the old items, add in our new item and put it in a new array and set that to be the value of items. Okay, so that is add item. Now what we need to do is make sure that we pass it down. And before we do that, I'm not gonna make the same mistake. I need to remember to bind it. This dot add item equals this dot add item dot bind this. Then we'll pass it down to our form and we can give it any name we want for that prop. I'm just gonna call it add item. So add item equals this dot add item. So now we have a prop inside of our form called add item that we can call. So when are we going to call it? We wanna call it when the form is submitted. We want to send the data up from this form into add item, which will then set the state in the parent component, add a new item to the items array, which will cause a re-render, and we should see our new item appearing in the shopping list as a new li. Okay, so on our form, let's add in an on submit and set that to this dot handle submit. And that doesn't exist, so let's write it. Handle submit takes the event object, which we will use because we want to prevent default. The default behavior is to refresh the page. Uh, if we don't specify where the form data goes to, it just refreshes the page. Okay, so event.preventDefault, and then all we do is call the parent method, this.props.addItem, and all we're going to pass in is this.state. Because this.state, all it has is name and quantity. And so if we pass in the name and the quantity as an object into this method, add item, it looks exactly like what we want it to look like. It looks like name is something and quantity is something else. And that's exactly what we would add in. We don't need to change it in any way. So over here, that's what we're going to pass through. This.props.addItem, this.state. And if we save, first we need to make sure we bind, handle submit. But otherwise, this should at least add into the array in the parent successfully. So we have our own state here. We're passing it in, the values, into the parent add item, which was passed down as a prop. Let me make sure I save this file as well. And here's a moment of truth. Oh, well, I'm a moron. I didn't add a button. <laughs> we need to make sure we have a button so we could submit the form. So at the bottom of the form, let's just do a button and say submit or how about add item? And this should submit the form. Okay, so let's say I'm buying eggs and I need two dozen. We add item and it's showing up now. It's been added to the state of that parent component. Now we haven't cleared the form. That's really simple to do because the way that they're linked together, we have this dot state name and quantity. Those are bound to the value of the inputs. So after we add the item, we can just reset the state. This dot set state name goes back to being empty and quantity goes back to being empty as well. Try it again. Once again, I'm getting four dozen eggs this time. Now our form is cleared. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this very common pattern where we make a form its own component and we've seen that forms need to have state. They are stateful in order to make React happy so that it can get its grubby claws on the inputs. We bind this.state.name to the value. Well, okay, I shouldn't say bind because that's confusing because we're actually binding things up here. That's unrelated. We set the value to be this.state.something 
and then we make sure that there's an on change. So anytime anything changes in that input, we're updating the state. So this component exists only to manage the form data and pass it up to the parent. So it is stateful, but it doesn't really do anything other than call a single, in our case, a single method on the parent, add item. And the shopping list parent is where all of the real state lives, all of the data that we care about that isn't just temporary form data. So as soon as the user hits submit or add item, it gets passed on up to the parent and added into here. Okay, 